Hello, Winabbers. My name is Jesse Meekum. This is podcast number 334 for Winab, where we teach you four rules to help you stop living paycheck to paycheck, get out of debt, and save more money. I like the podcast because it feels a little bit more like I can say what's on my mind, sometimes a little stream of consciousness, uh, hopefully not being terribly offensive to anyone. Um, but when you say so many things, sometimes, you know, you run that risk. And when you talk and no one else is there to hear you, except a bunch of people that you can't see, maybe it's even riskier. Today may be one of those days, and maybe not. I may be totally overblowing it. But uh, I was just thinking about, you know, people ask a lot. And I know in the book, I ruffled some feathers. Um, if you haven't read my book, You Need a Budget, uh, you should read it. It's probably at your library. You could get it for free. Um, anyway, we, uh, we were... Th- I don't even remember how this started, but people often ask me why why the hard stance on not paying for your kid's college. And while I was out in Manhattan for those three months doing the book promo and eating out constantly, um, that the culture out there, at least in the circle I was running, was uh, one of, oh no, you pay for your kid's school. People were very surprised. You know, like I was in a, in a peer group and we would interact and meet, just meeting people. And, and it was on my mind a lot. So I would try and weasel it, you know, weasel it into conversations and, and things as well. Um, and yeah, the, the culture out there was very much like parents, you put your kids in the best school you can and it better be one of the Ivy League schools and you pay what you need to pay and like big deal, private schools too, but the, you know, the higher education. Uh, the four-year degree, all that stuff. Uh, so that was interesting, just to compare that the feel, at least in my little circle, you know, out there uh, while we were there in Manhattan. And there, they were just gung-ho, like shocked. I mean, could not process the thought that I would just tell my kids, mm, as far as school goes, you're on your own. But the more I think about it, and you guys know I already talked about that Wall Street Journal article from a while ago with the million dollars of student loan debt from the orthodontist who lives just up over the mountain from me. Anyway, uh, it's been on my mind. And, and then I also have this, anyway, I gotta stay on topic. So I've been trying to reconcile this. I don't wanna be stupid as a dad, right? Although it is my first time, you know, it's all of our first time. So. You kind of have to say, like, hey, you do you, and I'll do me. And today's one of those days where I'm just going to tell you kind of where my mind's at in regards to my kids. And then you can be like, man, that's the stupidest podcast you've ever done. Uh, And you can even write and tell me. But you could also just say, eh, there was nothing there for me. Or you could say, oh, I totally agree. I already thought that, but I was more articulate than you were in saying it. That's fine, too. Or you could say, hmm. I used to think the other way, but what you're saying is ringing true at some point. Any of those. Here it is. Parents have a huge job, and no one's ever done it before. So we have to be a lot of, we have to be very forgiving with each other as we're all trying to figure it out. But this is how I've kind of crystallized it in my mind. I, it is my responsibility to give my kids a safe place to live. They should feel safe. Um, they, that does not mean coddled. It means safe. It's like when one of my kids walk through the door, it's like, I'm home. This is a safe place for me. I like it here. That is, that is a job of mine and Julie's. Uh, I need to make sure that they're provided for materially. I want them to be fed healthy food, and I want them to be clothed and y'all know that I'm fine clothing from Goodwill, but my wife disagrees with me. So they're clothed the way, the way she has described it in her clothing vision statement for the children. I'm just kidding. She doesn't have one. But anyway, not my thing. So I just have to supply the money so they are clothed. Um, that's, that's another one. Just shelter, food, clothing, and they feel safe. Third one is I need to teach them to work. I really want them to learn how to work. I uh, offered Porter a job to build a, basically a very long pile of rocks that will frame our yard that is next to two vacant lots. So I was trying to keep weeds back. This is not a fancy wall, it's a pile of rocks that is long. And I said I wanted, uh, you know, about eight inches tall and long, you know, from front to back of the property on the north and south sides. 
uh, to keep the weeds at bay so I can I don't have them growing right up into the lawn. And I said, I'll pay you and a buddy each $100 if you do that. Um, this morning, to my greatest joy, he's out there with a buddy, and he, they are, they've got a wheelbarrow that they had to go to four different houses to borrow because mine didn't survive the move. It was such a piece of junk. They don't make things like they used to. And um, so they had to go to four, di- four or five different houses, finally borrowed a lawnmower, or not a lawnmower, a wheelbarrow from somebody, which I thought was awesome, having to go to a neighbor, can we borrow a wheelbarrow? That's just cool. Then um, they're out there piling big stones in these vacant lots, and they're like this the worst ground. I don't want to say soil. It is not even so. It's dirt, but it's mostly rock with some dirt kind of smashed in, and uh, they're just gathering up all of these big rocks, throwing them in the wheelbarrow, rolling it over, dumping it, arranging it a little, going back again. It was starting to get hot, and uh, it was you know eight in the morning, and I thought that is pure joy seeing my kid with his buddy and they're out there doing manual labor of the finest kind so teaching them to work i am always looking for opportunities to have my kids do something hard where they're working they're probably whining you know as i did when i had to pick blackberries in the heat of the arizona summer but um You know, you survive and then you look back and you see that you've developed some work ethic and you're glad that your parents made you work. So that's another one. Kids working. We've got uh, safe, food, clothing, shelter. Teach them how to work. Teach them to be honest. And honest. Like, if you say you're going to do something, you do it. We don't mess around with that. If you say something, it's the truth. And I feel like... And of course, a lot of you guys know that I, I have a very, very religious, I have a strong faith, and so I'm raising my kids in that specific faith that has worked wonders for me in my life. But um, as far as universally applicable and not going into any kind of faith, I think those first four are it. I think if I just teach them, well, there's a final one. They, I think it's around safety, but feeling, you know, knowing that they're loved is different than giving them things, trying to show them that you love them. And I think if they were just know, oh yeah, my dad loves me, my dad thinks the world of me, my dad um, thinks I can do anything, my dad is confident in me, my dad is, uh, has disciplined me at times, and, uh, but I know that he has my back. You know? That's different than being safe. So I think probably just knowing that they're loved by their parents so you've got your, your kids feel loved. You're teaching them to be honest. You're teaching them how to work hard. You're providing food, clothing, and shelter. And then you are, are making sure that they feel safe at home. And I don't know if you can have that safety and not love or love and not safety, you know. But um, at the end of the day, that's the job. That really is it. And Father's Day was fairly, you know, uh, just a short time ago. Happy Father's Day to all the fathers that I, did, you know, I didn't talk about it when it actually was around, but uh, one of my favorite days of the year. And it, that's it. And we really have to get a grip on that and recognize that all of these other things that are thrown at us that tell us that we're not being a good parent if we don't do those things, if we don't have our kids do those things. I, mean, I could go on and on about the, what, the bubble that I feel is youth sports, uh, but I won't. Um, but when it comes to a college education, would you rather, this is Rose's favorite game, one of, you know, one of my kids, would you rather, you know, have your eyelid ripped off or, you know, something nasty? And she loves, she loves that. Would you rather um, provide your kids full ride, edu- you know, education, or would you rather that they have to scrape, claw, and fight for it? And I think I'd rather have the latter. Anyway, that's totally Jesse's take, and uh, it is subject to revision as I grow and learn and figure out how the heck you're supposed to be a parent. Until next time, follow YNAB's four rules and you will win financially. You've never budgeted like this.